Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be about admissions tests to Oxford. Um, I know that a lot of you are going to be having your admissions test within like the next week and so I thought there's no better time, in fact this might already be a little too late, but there's no better time to give you some last minute admissions tips um, when it comes to the Oxford admissions tests. Now the Oxford application process is quite different in general, but one of the ways that it varies from other universities um, is the fact that we have admissions tests for the majority, if not all of our courses. I think nearly every course in Oxford has an admissions test. Um, I know Earth Sciences doesn't, and I'm not sure if there are any other subjects, but I know there are a few that don't. So I think it's, import it's an important thing to go over, um, and I've been getting a lot of questions in the comments about them. This video is going to be divided into two parts. The first part is going to talk about general admissions tests and tips that I have about them, and the second part is going to be talking about the MAT in, um, in particular because that's the admissions test that I took and the one that I have the most knowledge of. Whether you're taking the MAT, the PAT, the ELAT, the BMAT, the TSA, or whatever to insert two letters followed by at you're taking, this video should be useful. I'd first like to clarify that this video is entirely my opinion. Um, it's not exact official university information, but this is what I have over the last year or and a half of being at university and thinking about applying my experience in the application process is what I think about admissions tests. So the reason that Oxford does admissions tests is a way to differentiate between applicants. Um, each subject has a raw set of skills that admissions tutors are looking for and these admissions tests are designed to be able to test those and find out whether applicants have these skills and especially because there are so many subjects that sort of invite applicants from a range of different subjects from before. So for example, you may be doing um, three sciences and maths at A level, but you may be looking to apply for law. So an exam like the LNAT will be testing your law app, your raw aptitude, not law aptitude, your raw aptitude for the subject. That may include things like your analytical skills, that may include things like your ability to read sources and write a response to something like that. I don't really know the specifics of the LNAT, but that's an example. Similarly for computer science, there are a lot of people who've never studied computer science before, um, and the math is just testing the logic and the math skills that would be required for you to do a degree. So there is definitely a direct correlation between the, co the entrance exam that you're taking and the skills that are required to do well in that course. The first thing to remember is that it's only one part of the process. There's so many different parts of the application that they're looking at that the admissions test is just one of the numbers that are also on that page. Obviously, the better you do in it, the better it is for your overall application. But if something does go wrong on the day, don't worry because they're gonna be looking at that in context with your GCSE grades, your A-level predictions, um, uh, your personal statement, your references, everything. So first things first, by this point, you've probably all registered for your application. Make sure you've registered for the right one. And if you're watching this video sometime in the future, um, find out which test you have to do is on the course website, it's in the entry requirements. Sign up on time because I remember when I was signing up, it became such a hassle because my school wasn't doing the test, so I had to go to a test centre and I didn't get a confirmation for my signing up to about a week before the exam, so I was constantly on edge whether it was done or not. So chase them up, chase up the examination centre, make sure they signed you up. Second of all, check the syllabus. Um, so I know for the map they've got like a full syllabus of exactly what can be examined. I would check that, make sure you know what you're being tested on, because remember they can't test you on something that isn't on the syllabus. Often for these tests they don't have an actual syllabus because there's no content that's being tested. However, subjects like for the exams like the MAT and the PAT, they do have a specific content that they're looking at. Whereas some of the TSA, I, it's more like your ability, your problem solving skills, your um, ability to look at uh, analyze facts, statistics, things like that, so there's less of a prescribed syllabus in that case. Second thing, which hopefully at this point you're doing, is past papers. Past papers can be are an invaluable source, and as much as the website says we want to test your raw skill and what your skills are at this present moment, it would be kind of silly to not practice the exam before going into it. It's very important that you get uh, an idea of what the exam's actually going to be like and the time condition, so I would say if it's an essay, practice that in the time condition that you have. Try to practice that in five minutes less because remember on the day, it's likely that you're going to be sort of anxious and worried, so if examinations get to you, try to give yourself a little less time when you're practicing so that when you actually have the actual day, um, it's not that bad. Get familiar with the paper, get familiar with the kind of que the kinds of questions that you're going to be answered, but don't get too familiar because what happened is that when I was doing my paper, for the last like seven years they've been asking one specific type of question about a logic question called the Alice, Bob and Charlie question in the map one, in the map paper, and in my year they just completely ditched that question. That was literally the only question in the paper that I was good enough to get 100% on that question, but they just didn't have it. So like I came out distraught thinking that the one question that I could have done, they didn't put this year. Yeah, get familiar with the paper, understand the timings, the sort of kinds of questions that they ask, but don't get too familiar and be ready for unexpected 
questions because at the end of the day, that is what they're going to be testing in an interview. They're not going to be asking you things that they know you know the answer to. They want to ask to see how you react in a situation that is unexpected or a question or a type of question that you haven't seen before. And lastly, collaborate. Make sure you speak to other people. If there are other people in your school doing your test, talk to them, give them your essays, read each other's essays, see where you're going better because you only you can only gain from that. And I'd say go on the student room. There are discussions every year. I had joined the maths discussion when I was applying and I found it super useful because people had posted their answers, their solutions. They were giving advice on how to prepare for certain kinds of questions. And it was super useful to be able to realize that there were other people who are in the same problem and the same situation that I was in. Go to your teachers in school, ask them for help. I did that a lot, um, especially when it came to questions on the map that I couldn't answer. <coughs> and the last piece of advice that I have, I know I said the other one was last, but this is the last one. Do not get caught up on averages. Do not get caught up on statistics because remember, it's one part of your application. You may have something else in your application that is standing out and they may interview for that reason. So don't get caught up on the average on the exam is 70% and I'm only getting 40 or I'm only getting 50. Just do your best and give it your shot because if you're worthy of an interview and you're worthy of a place, they will see that through your work. Now coming on to specific stuff for the mat, which is the exam that I took. In terms of the mat, what I found the one mistake that I made when I was applying is that I started doing past papers, but I started from the most recent ones and worked my way backwards. And as I kept going on, I kept scoring higher and higher, thinking that I was getting better at the paper. But in reality, the paper was getting a little easier every year. And as the years came more and more to the present, they were getting harder. So I thought I was getting better at the paper, but no, the papers were getting easier. Um, leave the most recent papers, so the last year and the year before, to a week before the exam, so about now. If you haven't done it yet, now's a perfect time to do it because it's going to be the most realistic a representation of what the paper's going to be like. Especially if you're applying for computer science, um, you're going to have to do one of the logic questions in the paper. Well, I think it's like question six or something like that. Um, what I would do is I would go on ice-want-to-study-engineering.com or something like that. And they have quite a few logic questions on that. So I practice those because although they're not similar to the style, they do test the same kind of skills that they're looking for in that, which can also be quite useful for interviews. Coming to the first section of the paper, the first 10 questions with multiple choice, do not leave any of them blank because you have nothing to lose by taking a guess if you really have no clue what's going on. I found that section quite hard. Um, and uh, what I would do is I would try the elimination strategy of looking at if it, I think it was four or five um, options to choose from. I would always try and eliminate the two that were just really unlikely and then between the two try and like really, really think about it because those are the ones where you get a lot of marks very easily. But if you don't know, take a knowledgeable guess because it's better than leaving it blank. Do not, and I repeat, do not leave it blank. You're better off guessing with that odd chance of getting something right than not. For the second section where you have your long sort of longer questions, um, one thing that I cannot stress enough is write out what you're thinking. There were lots of questions in the map when I gave the actual final one that I had no clue how to do it, but I wrote down my thought process and said, I know that this relates to this, I know that this is about this topic, and I know that this is the interesting connection, but I really can't make the, um, make the things right now. I can't make those connections in my head right now, um, which is a lot better than you just leaving it blank. And remember that there is a human being answering your paper rather than a computer. And from what I've heard from tutors is that if there is a borderline candidate who the rest of their application looks quite good, but the math isn't very strong or the pattern isn't very strong, they will ask for that script back and look at it in detail. So you're much better off writing detailed a detailed answer of what you think is going on because I remember I was running out of time in the mat, didn't have time to answer it, but just wrote down what I was thinking in my head and what I would have done had I known. Remember that it's not like A-level. It's not like A-level or IB where you're expected to actually get in the 80s and the 90s percent to do well or get that A-star. Um, I actually got 48 out of 100 in my mat and still got an interview. The average mark for my year was 43 and the average amongst people who've got offers was like 68 or 70 or something like that. So don't get caught up with the averages. I, I can't stress this enough. I got 48, still got an interview and ended up getting an offer. So it is only just one part of the entire application process. The mat and all the admissions tests are meant to be hard. They're not meant to be easy. They're meant to test your raw skill. So if you're finding the papers difficult, you're not alone. I found the mat terrifying for me. it was the hardest part of the process by far. I thought that in an interview, I'd be able to ask questions to get clarifications on, on the questions they were asking me, but in, in the mat, it was just me and the paper. Don't worry too much about it. Write down what you're thinking. If you're stuck in a question, move on and come back to it. And don't get caught up in it for too long, then come back with a fresh mind and try and write whatever you can. Just give it your best shot because it is just one part of the entire application process. You don't have to be a genius to do well in it. 
Um, if you find yourself, especially in the map, getting around the 50s, I'd say that's quite a decent mark. Good luck with your tests next week. Um, I hope all of you do well. I'll soon be making an interview video. Um, and if you have any other videos that you'd like to see me make, um, put them in the comments down below. Don't forget to click that subscribe button as well as that thumbs up. Let's try and get this video to 100 thumbs up. Remember, once you've done your test, don't think about it. Um, I know it's very hard to do, but just ignore it. It's done. Whatever. You did your best. You've sent your application. You've worked super hard on your personal statement. Um, now that's it. You just wait for the college to get back to tell you whether you have an interview or not. But fingers crossed. Good luck. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.